added to this site. The new program is um, how to calculate hot water recirculation systems. The original program here we won't run into how to do that. Um, that is covered up here in a video. So you can click that to see what the what to do in this um, original program to calculate the hot and cold water branch pipe sizes. So today we're going to look at step three where we calculate the hot water recirculation pipe and pump sizes. Now when we talk about heat um, in associated with water it's a very complicated subject so I suggest we do learn more by clicking this link here which scrolls us down to uh, further down the page to this section here. Now a hot water recirculation loop the object is to um, reduce the wait times that it takes for hot water to get from our heater to our furthest fixture. So we do that by circulating hot water around and around continuously. Now that circulation loop can be vertical as shown here, it can be horizontal on a single floor level like shown in there, there can be any number of loops and secondary loops. So when we have secondary loops we need to balance the heat, we put in what is called a balancing valve. You can read all about it here. There's a test plug we can use. Um, we have all sorts of expansion problems when we start dealing with hot water. And then we've got the insulation and all the, all the uh, rigmarole to do with that. We've got two terms. We've got a thermal conductivity term for the insulation and we've got an R value. Both are explained reasonably extensively here. Then we calculate a recirculation pump size. So basically what we do, we calculate the maximum heat that's being lost around our circulation loop. Heat is being radiated all the time, so we're losing heat out of here. And heat is measured in watts. So once we know the total amount of heat being lost out of here, we know how much water to push around to make up that uh, lost heat. Alright, let's go back up to our program. We can press the back button which will take us back to where we were. Now, we must enter our original starting conditions. This allows us to calculate the hydraulic grade. So, in here we enter whatever we enter, press the pipe sizes and that calculates the hydraulic grade. This hydraulic grade we see here is that slope. That is also used to design our main hot water pipe. So that's what we need to calculate that first. So when we come down here we also need to calculate all these. Now these are the hot water pipes in the first part of the circulation loop that serve the fixtures. However, they are calculated to the same hydraulic grade that we saw earlier. We must do this again because hot water in this situation is calculated differently than the um, normal branch lines of hot water. It has a different allowable flow and it has a, a velocity I mean and it has a different, slightly different allowable um, flow uh, in loading units. So we calculate all that. Now this gives us our starting pipe sizes which we use to enter into our main program which is here. Okay, so these pipe sizes are calculated without any recirculation flow being added. So we've got our building and we calculate our loading units now for our hot water. And we add them up as we go progressively down the building. So once we have our loading units, we can um, we can calculate loading units by putting our uh, a number of fixtures in here, and now it'll come loading units down there. Anyway, we've 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 calculated our loading units. We've come down to here. We find the maximum loading units for any particular pipe and read off the pipe size. 
that pipe size we enter in our system here. To calculate the total heat loss we must add in all the pipes in all the circuits without our um, recirculation flow added. But the code says we must calculate our pipe size that includes the recirculation flow. But we don't know the recirculation flow until we've calculated our pipe size. So it's a bit of trial and error. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now here are some default values that we've added for our insulation conductivity in watts per meter kelvin. Kelvin is just another term for uh, centigrade. Now um, our recirculation water temperature, I've taken it as leaving our heater at 65 degrees. The code gives us an allowable temperature drop all the way around the circuit of 5 degrees, so it must therefore end up back at the heater at 60 degrees, no less than 60. We've lost 5 degrees in going all the way around the circuit. Now our ambient temperature, that's the temperature of our air, I've taken as 15, and a safety margin of 10%. Everything recommends a safety margin. So 10% is the usual. Now the minimum R, this is the resistance of the insulation. The code in our particular circumstances is recommended 0.6. I encourage you to read through the code. There's a whole lot of things in there that aren't covered here uh, and will allow you to vary this here should you so choose. Now, it's a trial solution. We start by entering the suitable pipe from the above table. That's this table here. So we go back to our loading unit. So uh, we might say the pipe has got, the first pipe might have a, a loading unit. Of, uh, let's say we go up here, loading units. So we've got uh, 20 loading units. Well, 14 is not enough, so we'd have to use a 25 diameter for that one. So put a 25 in there and say we had, uh, what do we say, 20 loading units in there. The first one here, I didn't enter it yet, the first one here is our return line. See return there, so the return line doesn't have any loading units because it's uh, the recirculation flow and it's uh, calculated by the heat loss, nothing to do with loading units. So we can put in, we, this is a trial too, let's say we um, want 20 diameter. The code says we can't go below 10. The insulation here, um, if we put something that's too low, let's say we put a 9 in there, up will come a warning saying um, our thermal resistance has been calculated at 0.26. We need a thermal resistance um, of whatever it was down here. Thermal resistance are 0.6. Sorry, it came out as 0.26. It's got to be 0.6, so it's not thick enough. So we make it thicker. I know from uh, past experience has got to be 25, so we won't go through all those. We'll put in 25 there. So we didn't get the warning. The R is 0.71, which is greater than 0.6, so everything's fine there. Now, our insulation thickness for this 20. So the same thing will occur. If we put in something that's too low, we get a warning. It's too low. It's got to be thicker. Please increase the insulation thickness. Click anywhere in the box that will get rid of it. So we were too low with our insula, too thin. So let's go again. I know 25 will work, so here's 0.71 again. Who'd have thought? So we do this for all our um, pipes. You'll probably find the pipes are getting bigger and bigger as we get more loading units being added. So we'll just 32. We'll go up here, walk to 32, can handle 90. So I'll put in 90 there. Insulation thickness, we'll stick with 25. 50. So for 50 it can handle, uh, whoa, look, it can handle 443 loading units. So that's about 400. And 
and 25 again. 71 again for a 25 thick installation. Now let's just put some links in here. We'll just guess a couple of links. Alright, we've got that. Now, um, all these yellow fields, by the way, mean that they're calculated fields. We can't enter anything in there, even if we wanted to, because they're a calculated field. We can only enter things in the white ones. So, it says calculate the remaining. So, we do that because we need to calculate the pump duty. If we don't know the pump duty till we need so we know what the recirculation flow is and what the uh, we don't know that till we know what the uh, head loss uh, the heat loss is and we don't know the head loss uh, head on the pump until we've worked out the head loss for all this all these lengths so let's do this now you'll see another warning's come up and this warning says to calculate the hot water recirculation pump head please select all pipe sections in the main loop. The main loop is a circuit with the greatest head loss. Sometimes it's necessary to calculate more than one circuit to find the worst case. We do this by clicking the little square at the end of the appropriate row. So that's these little squares here. And you'll see up here that um, there's a little well, this this is in blue, and it's when you hover over it, it goes to red. That means there's a, a note under there. If I click that, we get the similar thing. To calculate the pump head loss, please select all pipes that are in the circuit with the highest total head loss. Now, let's have a look and see what that means. Let's go back to these um, other instructions, learn more, and we'll have a quick look at our recirculation loop. Now the one with the most head loss is normally the longest one. So all the pipes that we see in this loop are the ones that we'll add in that table further up. But sometimes we don't know whether this is the worst case, that one, or, or maybe this one. It depends on what fixtures are on it and what the pipe size is. But to work out the pump head we need to know the worst case because that'll be the highest head. So let's say the, you know, the longest one. It's normally the worst case anyway. So we always try with that one first. Okay. We can go back by pressing the, the back arrow. You can't see me doing it, but I, I pressed it. We got back to where we were. So let's say all these ones we entered are in the main line. We'll enter another one in here just for fun and to see what happens because it won't be counted. We'll put another 32 in there, another 90 there, and I'll give that a couple of uh, 19. 19 probably won't work. Let's see, I see that's 54, it won't work. Oh, let's go to 25 again. The length of that one, I'll put that in. Oh, I'll make it even smaller. So sometimes these lengths might only be one storey high, might only be two and a half metres long before you get to another bigger pipe size. Or a smaller pipe size, depending which way you're going. OK, now, we've got all those entered. They're all in the main loop. This one's not. Uh, we calculate the remaining. The outer flow due to the recirculation has exceeded the pipe capacity. These pipe sections are shown in dark pink. OK, there we go. So uh, we know when we put loading units in here, we put them in as being the pipe capacity. So now when we've worked out the circulation flow, it's gone and added in here and found out that this pipe's not big enough anymore. You see, we had a flow of uh, 81. The flow is now 86.86. So what do we do? We'll have to increase the pipe size. 32, what's the next one up? Put a 40 in there. Let's see if that helps. Still got a problem. So it's this one. We didn't change this one. So that was 32. Let's go again. Let's put a 40 in there too. The next highest number. 
calculate the remaining. Ah, oh, we got through it this time. Now we can see it's it's um, added a few things up. So it's added the total heat. We found the total heat loss is uh, 1,157 watts. See, heat loss in watts. It's 1.1 kilowatts. And so a reasonable amount of heat that you're losing, just p pumping it around, that's going to cost a lot of money. If you want to save some money, you can make the insulation thicker. So let's try, especially on the bigger one. We'll remember that 1100 here. Let's make a, let's put a 50 in there, and maybe a 50 in here. See if it reduces the heat loss. Oh look, it's only 900 there now. So making the insulation bigger will save on electricity or whatever fuel you're using to heat the water. All right, we've got that. So now look, it's worked out the pump size down here. The recirculation pump duty is 0.05 litres a second. I mean, it's only a trickle that's trickling around at, at six metres head. Important notes on the pump. Now that basically says, you know, you need to uh, possibly check the head loss because uh, the head loss, if you just go around the pipes, is four meters. I've added another two in there for unknowns and for extras. There could be a, an extra through the um, heater. You'll have to check with the manufacturer. There could be more head losses through the balancing valves, as I said, I've only allowed an extra meter, two meters all up, which, can, which allows for the head loss through the heater and any other valves. There's a non-return valve in there somewhere um, after the pump, so that could have a reasonable head loss. So my two meters I've allowed here may not be enough. Anyway, that is uh, basically a quick run through of how to work the uh, system. Oh, we've also got the opportunity to do this for uh, plastic if we want to do plastic, if we've got a plastic system. Because plastic pipes are a different size and uh, they're a different internal diameter and they're even a different wall thickness. And we've added a little bit of heat resistance to go through a plastic wall. But uh, at the end of the day, it's best not to combine plastic and copper. There are some issues with that. Anyway, that's it. Enjoy the program. <laughs>